And shares of Microsoft higher today as a tech titan says game on. Let's get to Josh Lifton with the details. Josh. Melissa, what does the future of Xbox looks like? Well, it turns out it doesn't necessarily all depend on Xbox consoles. Xbox making some news today, pretty interesting. One saying it is now working with manufacturers to embed Game Pass on smart televisions. So Game Pass, of course, is Microsoft's subscription service that gives users access to a library of hundreds of games. And earlier this year, Xbox said Game Pass already boasted 18 million users. So with this offering, no extra hardware would be needed except, of course, a controller. That's not all. Microsoft also saying it is developing a standalone streaming device. So the idea here is if you have a strong internet connection, you could just stream the Xbox experience. Again, no console required. Microsoft not saying yet, though, when this new app or hardware will officially launch. But Bernstein's Mark Merdler saying Microsoft is trying to become the Netflix of gaming here, creating a popular service that could become very valuable over time. In addition, Mark says this could also drive scale and margin improvement in Azure, because remember the service is running in Azure data centers. Now switching gears to another kind of video game story, let's end here on EA, which says hackers did break into its network and stole source code, but no player data was accessed. It does not expect any impact on business either. EA, you can see, finished basically flat. But meanwhile, cybersecurity names like FireEye and CrowdStrike close sharply higher. Melissa, back to you. Big issue. Josh, thank you. Josh Lipton. Let's first trade Microsoft. Um, Pete Najeri and I will go to you, uh, your hero, Satya Nadella. And I say that because it's a CEO that you greatly admire, said that go, you know, using cloud is a fast, easy way to get into gaming. Um, is this the right move, particularly yeah. when the consoles, I mean, they're facing the chip shortage, can't get them out the door. Right. I think it makes so much sense, Mel. You've got 200 million subscribers, or not subscribers, but owners of the console. You've got 18 million subscribers to this streaming sort of an idea with the, uh, with the games. I think it makes total sense. I think when you take a look at and strip out gaming from their earnings in this most recent re uh, uh, report, it's amazing what they're doing right now. They're actually up 50%. It was $5 billion in revenue. So it tells me a lot about where the, the direction is that they're going. And I can only imagine going forward that the streaming will go, will go somewhere from that 18 million number. I, I, I actually could see it in the not too many distant uh, years that where we'd be seeing this in the hundreds of millions. I, I could see that as, and it's already a 999 uh, element. So. That type of package, I think, makes so much sense for Microsoft, and it's just one more reason why Satya Nadella is so good, because it's not just about the cloud. It actually brings in the cloud, but it's gaming, and it's another way to get folks involved with the gaming world, especially those that don't want to have the console, and they can ab absolutely do this in a streaming way. I think this makes total sense for Microsoft. Yeah, to build on Pete's point, I think he's earned the, he's earned the respect, and you know, people are now going to cut him the slack, and. Basically, if he says they're going to do something, they're going to get behind it. The market's going to get behind it. And if you look, you talk about a chart that's going basically lower left to upper right, series of higher lows and higher highs. It's poised to take out, I think the all-time high was 253 or so a few weeks ago, into the July 22nd or thereabouts earnings release. So I think he's earned that respect. I think the market's going to pay, I think the market's going to pay him off for this move. Who should be worried about Microsoft's move, Tim? Maybe, you know, maybe Tencent, um, because, uh, you know, I think Tencent's the biggest gaming company in the world. And to the extent, you know, Ensemble and through the cloud is, is partially how Tencent's been, been, been dominating globally. It makes so much sense for, for Microsoft to be here. And again, Pete pointed out those numbers. I mean, it's, a five, it's been a $5 billion business, and, and it's been growing rapidly over the last few years uh, in terms of the consoles. So um, also, huge boost to Azure, which, again, last quarter, by the way, you know, 46% growth. People are expecting low 40s. Uh, continues to surprise to the upside. So... I like Microsoft Tire here, and for all the reasons we talked about in the first part of the show, just in terms of the rotation going on here, this is where we're going to see this next wave of growth. Yeah, I would just jump on that. I mean, I agree with everything that Pete and Tim just said about that. And you look at that chart, 263 was that high. Um, there was nothing wrong with that high, uh, with that print, uh, the, the fiscal Q3 print in late April, um, but expectations were really high. So you look at that chart there, there's been two 8% peak to trough declines, but continues to make a series of higher lows and higher highs here. So expect a breakout. But I guess the other way to think about it is, just play the QQQ. I mean, if you feel pretty good about these Q2 earnings and what the back half guidance is for the major tech names, you just do it that way. Dan is being shy. 
You yeah, know why you know I that? say that? We have we have calls <laughs> earlier in the day, and Dan actually called Microsoft the best looking chart in the market. We did, yeah. But last Were week, I listening? but last <laughs> week I called Tesla the worst looking chart in the market. No stranger to hyperbole. Five like percent in my face. So know. Um, you know, hopefully this doesn't go down five percent. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.